Yeah. No, it's not moving. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about something which is very commonly used in routine practices. This is basically a presentation for for uh, people who handle more of uh, street art and to understand them to get a better insight into the how do you analyze the histograms which usually cause an end of the graph. So this we are not we're talking more on heart disease and platelet uh, counting and how we can interpret on this point. So keeping this point, uh, let us look at what heart disease look like um, and how heart disease are assessed. Now heart disease are assessed and platelet both are assessed with the same principle called as impedance. When any substance passes between the two electrodes and uh, um, the pulse is generated or resistance pulse is created. That's called as impedance, and this. Uh, pulse which is generated, this is a record. And this record could be high or peak or low peak. So this is what we call as uh, impedance resistance record. And this is calculated for a counting of RBC cell size and platelet cell size. Using this, uh, we could uh, go to another technology now which is called as optical platelets. With the help of which we also try to categorize the type of um, Platelets which should be uh, which we can assess both as a take as well as you can assess the fragmented RBCs, which is usually de depicted in an optical platelet as a drop a drop drop down from the uh, diagram. As you can see on the uh, in the circle which I represented as an FRC, that is called the fragmented RBCs. So according to this, now let us uh, look at much more uh, a better way of understanding an impedance graph. So this would be a normal graph which is usually seen in any hematology coated analysis. And this is common in most of our analysis which have three parts. So if we look at the graph, we see prints at the uh, bottom, we can see uh, discriminators as 25, 5, uh, 60 and 250. And if we divide them with something called as discriminators, which is called as lower discriminators and upper discriminators. This is common rule against any impedance graph we, which we plot. So we, for RBCs, we choose a lower discriminator between 25 and 75, and upper discriminator we choose somewhere around 200 to 250. A normal graph usually represents a huge peak and a large major distribution of the curve is between 60 and 125. So this would be the normal part of the curve. So your parameters from the curve, which is derived parameters from the curve itself, or we also call them as bell shape or Gaussian distribution. Is this particular yellow shaded area is what we take it up and we assess our MCD and RDL. So, this is how your hematology filter calculates an MCD and RDL. So, now we let us look at some kind of modifications of the graph which is represented on filter. Where you can see a graph getting shifted, that's you can see a lower discriminator which we which just said, which usually between 25 and 60. This is we or starts beyond it, which is starts from the left side of the curve, what we call left shift of the curve. This usually happens when there's microcytic anemias or high deficiency anemia, which you commonly encounter. And also look at the graph, the peak of the graph is usually less, means the RBC size is always always less. So your MC values of these these graphs will be always lesser when compared to the normal curve. So when we look at sometimes what we see is this is uh, also another type of graph where you can see a small peak in, in, in the head of the um, the normal curve. These small peaks are either because one is a fragmented RBC which should be present because either due to correction and is wrong or due to analysis happen due to the transportation which is quite delayed, which is common in a laboratory which we get samples from other sources. And other causes could be WBC also be there the fragment which are also seen causes of lysine to poor affecting the WBC fragments. And the other most common if we receive samples from this thing or another area as we eastern part of the country, then we have large platelets as a common condition. So as I said, this is a normal graph where we look at an NC calculation from at the peak of the curve.
uh, and the base based on this uh, P calculate under the speed uh, P calculate MC. And the normal MC range is from 55 to 125 meters. So you think that as I just told you, we also calculate RDW the same plot. When we look at the CD percentage and the SD values of these, where we calculate the portion duration and the normal range of RDW CD percentage ranges between 11.5 to 14.5%. That is the width of the CD should be really that. And for our standard deviation curve should be around 35 to 45 centimeters. So this would be our two types of RDW, which is RDW CD report and RDW SD report. So this is how we look at the values of Normally, uh, when you uh, look at the graph, you look at, uh, as I showed you the graph of the Belgian curve, and the conditions where this RDW becomes less is in terms of heterozygous thalassemia and chronic disorders, which is of more frequent microcytic conditions. And when RDW is increased condition, then we look at when an eye deficiency anemia, Embryo hatch disease, osteoblastic anemia conditions, these RDW starts increasing. Basically, I'm trying to tell you that there are very representation of RDW from higher to lower. So, this is what helps us to understand it. So, if you make an uh, understanding between RDW and NCV, we can give a brief look at which part of the disease has been belonged to. If the MCV is higher size and uh, the RDW is also increased, then you think of osteoblastic anemia. So at the end of the report, when you see an MCV very high, and RDW also very high, which is normally reflected on the graph, you can straight away put a comment in your report saying that go ahead and do minimum data uh, values correlated with And if you have MCV low and RDW high, you can write in please uh, advice for high profile. Sorry for this question. So but in case if it has a normal MCV, which gives us a clue that this could be due to hemodiomopathy, like a sickle cell anemia or anything like that. So we need to have a, a big picture like this gives us a clue for us to what next step we should try for clinician at this point using these programs. So let us look at some of the flagging, how we look at an in this case. So one flag, most of that might be all the, all the curves of this period. So there's an RBC graph or the platelet graph. It has to start with the baseline and end at the baseline. If there's not, if the graph doesn't start start at the baseline or, is it, uh, or end at the baseline, not at the baseline, then it's always considered as a flag. So in this case, now we have uh, the flag which the curves not starting at the baseline. So in this case, this possible cause which I've already told once, if you have come in the front of an RBC curve, either it may be because of large lateness. The other cause is also called as platelet clubs. And sometimes the micro RBCs, it's nothing but the fragmented RBCs. The most important point here is, is called as noise. What is noise? Noise is nothing but the, the dust particle. Your reagent has dust. Your diode has dust. This is the most important point where you find a elevation curve at the left hand of the problem. So you should be very careful not to have dust in your diet. Most of the time we live in an environment where sometimes there's dust in the environment. So the next part here is that, okay, we have looked at the left side, let us look at the right side, where we look at if the same thing happens if the right is not uh, present or the peak is not uh, touching the right side. This happens only in case of there's an RBC agglutinin, or this code that it means. In these cases, you need to advise the clinician, please do cool test and direct and in that. So this gives you guidance for the clinicians of what you report when you say that my curves is so please advise for cool test. So this helps the clinician to be, have more confidence on the report. And also another point is that this usually happens when there's a mutated RPCs. So this also is an indication that uh, the bone marrow is undergoing an extensive stress or an you know, regeneration of a lot of RBC getting popped into the situation for it. Another clue is that this could also be a WBC, which is most commonly seen in elderly people where you have a CLN language. So this is how you get a clue when you're looking at an RBC graph itself. And if you have a clue, uh, WBC count around 18,000 or 16,000, and you have an RBC graph like this. And when you look at a peripheral smear, it looks more of like a more of an inferior population. Then you think it could be 
not see any condition. Do you alarm the patient, alarm the condition, say that, please advise for the conversations in the flow or genetics in the condition. So now we're looking at the same flag. If it has, um, we'll go look at, uh, Uh, we we'll look at this condition when there are both of the conditions happy. You have a double peak appearances, or we what we call it as anisocytosis, that means two populations of cells which is positive. This usually produces a very large RDW, and this usually happens when there is multiple uh, conditions like high deficiency associated with between uh, B12 deficiencies or fluid deficiency associated with this. And also, most commonly in practice in, in hospital, when it happens in this the transfusion of an anemia when it comes to the non -side. So, this uh, double peak is a common phenomenon in these conditions. So, you look, uh, look at the graphs, so you do not get panic that we, we have some double peaks, so what, what we have to look at. So, that time, what happens is this condition, this will have like microsatic and hypochromic, and we'll have normal. I am going to picture like the hemoglobin of the 12 grams or 13 grams, but no transition will happen in this case. So, this is how you look at how is it really a double peak? Why was it double peak inside? So, yeah, let's look at some kind of like uh, other case like scenarios, okay, like, like, like we explained the same as in the graph. So, as I said, the normal is the graph, which you can see uh, it's probably uh, um, within the R. The, the secret parameter within 16 or 25. Whereas microsatic, when you look at it, it just shifts to the left and the peak of the drop set. So this is most important. And the other important factor is that the width of the RWS is very high. It increases. So this it gives us a picture that this could be a microsatic population. I need to look at the uh, patient of high profile patient or not. Should I do a high profile for this patient? So when you look at the, the uh, that would be the earliest clue of your identifying it. This is the frank anemia where you don't have to have any clue here. Here this is all your your, your, your CDC parameters so this are showing in this condition, which are showing the hemoglobin is too low and six or seven grams, and you have uh, uh in series too low, and all the all the parameters were put in a drop down. So if you have easily identified this and efficiency. The only point where it will be very tough to identify that deficiency in there is in the early phase. So that could be easily detected using your histogram. That is the reason why you need to understand where is the start point of the system to identify the early cases of anemia, not the late cases of anemia. The, and another point where you require to understand the histogram is that not only the early cases, and to really understand whether this patient is responding to my treatment of anemia or not. So this will give us an indication that what is this double peak which I see? When I have a double peak, so oh, that means it's like I'm having a dual, again, uh, dual deficiency. No, please don't understand that. The double peak which I showed you before had a similar height and similar thing. In this case, the second peak is of lower height. So this indicates us that this is a new population of cells which is popping out that is called immature or more normal cyclic cells coming into the picture. And these people tend to have some kinds of mutated disease also. So these is what are the indication that the response of the treatment for eye deficiency is already happening. So it's a good sign to, uh, to the clinician saying that your treatment is working for this patient. So this is a clue where you need to write down the CDC report rather than saying that I have a, just an efficiency anemia or just a microsatic anemia. Looking at your scatter plot, write a comment uh, signature saying that this scatter plot, this uh, particular patient had a double peak, so therefore this patient might be responding to the treatment. So this is how you give a good picture. And your, so that means you are trying to give the patient my treatment is right, so therefore I can go ahead and continue the treatment. So this is the same thing scenario which happens when you look at an early metallic anemia. So when you look at early metallic anemia, our interviews little slightly increase and the same pattern of downfall of the peak and slight shift to the right. This is what most important in metallic anemia. Right deficiency anemia, just the opposite which happen in metallic anemia. This is what happens next. Advanced, there's no point in looking at the scatter plot. As you know that, we already know from the other parameters itself that it is not classic. Our main idea of understanding side plot is to identify the early metallic and early identification. 
So now looking at uh, this point, let us look at something called reticular sites. So reticular sites are nothing but our um, immature um, uh, RBCs. Those are like polychromatic RBCs or uh, uh, orthochromoblastic RBCs. These are called the in RBCs. Are, we are looking more at optical chamber or fluorescence that. So this would be our RBC, dropout RBCs, and then which the graph with the fluorescence, high intensity of fluorescence, and a high forward scatter is usually considered as reticulocytes. So this reticulocytes count is what helps you to calculate uh, our, uh, give a correct value of the patient's conditions. So let us look at something called as new parameter. We currently looked at the RBCs as an impedance parameter. We're looking at RBCs as an optical RBCs. That's a new strategy which we look at the laser scatter. Laser scatter grams to understand an RBC pattern of it. Some people now might have the optical RBCs to counter the set, which is more important because we, we measure these RBCs by having a low angle scatter measure on X axis and a high angle measure on the Y axis. Using these two parameters, we calculate the volume of the RBCs and hemoglobin parameter of the RBCs. So basically we can, uh, and using these parameters, I can classify whether they are macrocytic hypochromic or macrocytic normal to that of the microcytic hypochromic. So the, yeah, basically we can classify the RBCs in all the five, nine parameters. The same plot of this one is your well-shaped curve of your RBC in your impedance graph. So anything which this is a normal pattern of an optical RBC count. And imagine the same curve which is present in the well shaped curve in a impedance uh, set. So this is how we can cap, we call this quadrant classification of optical, uh, optical RBCs. So when you do that, which of falls on the left is your hypochromic, which of falls on the right is hyperchromic, which of falls on the bottom is microcytic. Which are falls on top is macrocytic. So this entire red population moves up, macrocytic. The entire red population comes down, microcytic. Moves left and down, microcytic hypochromic. So this is basically how we look at it. Which falls on my center plot is non -cytic. So this, what I'm showing is now. This is how we look at a uh, optical platelet, a normal graph on the left. And this one is eye, eye deficiency anemia. As you can see, it is more microcytic, low on the bottom, and majority falls on the microcytic, and it varies from hypochromic to When you come to um, uh, non metallic macrocytosis, in this case, it is showing more of macrocytes, but the RBCs are still of uh, not showing any chromosome changes. 